around and welcome back, welcome back for yet another special edition of the Michael Deacon program. Joining me in a moment is Nick from the Occult Rejects. If you've never heard of their program before, it covers a vast array of topics such as the occult, true crime, spirituality, secret societies, hidden history, lore and reports conspiracies. Now without further ado, let's get down to business. And with me right now is Nick. What is going on? How are you? How are you, my friend? Very good, very good. Thank you for having me on. I really do appreciate that, actually. Absolutely. Right. I'm glad you're here. There's a lot to discuss with you, and, you know, i got to be honest with you, I see you smoking there. It makes me very, very jealous. <laughs> yeah, I got the, uh... You got, got the, got got the new ports, yeah. Yeah, I got the new ports going. The new port going, yeah. <laughs> But of course, you're the host of the Occult Rejects, and of course, you have uh, your own thing under the umbrella of New York Patriot, I believe. Yes, yeah, I do have that show. Um, I have just recently switched that show over to the RSS feed for the Occult Rejects, and I might even start changing my intro, so. But yeah, I do have the NY Patriot show, which was kind of like, uh, for me, having guests on. Maybe sometimes I'd cover topics, but the Occult Rejects uh, is a little bit more of a heavy topic base kind of like longer show yeah series is more of a long form sort of show that's yeah. kind of like your bread and butter in other words yes very much so i put yeah i put a lot more love into that for sure there you go. i mean both but you know that one you're more focused yeah. on that not, not that no, you're not focused but that's like your prime the primary one gotcha and where can people hear this by the way let's just get this out of the way just in case they're wondering well where the hell do we listen to this already <laughs> Um, the Occult Rejects and the NY Patriot Show, like you mentioned before, um, that's on all major podcasts. Um, and then they are both uh, on uh, BitChute, Rumble, and then YouTube. I have the Occult Rejects on YouTube, and uh, both shows drop on there. Very nice. Thank you. Very, very nice. And I must say, I like YouTube, and I, I was liking Rumble for quite some time, but now I kind of feel like Rumble is kind of just like a little... It's a little too ghetto right now. Like, I'm hoping for it to improve, but... The improvements don't seem to be coming at all, for whatever reason. Yeah, it's, it's um, I mean, I think it definitely works better than Hit Shoot, but uh, oh, I definitely, God, yeah. think it's quirks, and, uh, you know, you know, it's, you know, it kind of is, just my opinion, what kind of sucks about that platform is that, um, you know, the one good thing, it definitely has much more freedom of speech. Right, right. I do like that, but I think what comes with that, then, is just some, like, some really, in my opinion, just some outlandish stuff, and from... <laughs> From what I've seen, that seems to be what everybody goes on those on Rumble and BitChute for, is for that crazy shit. So, in my opinion, whenever you actually have something that might be really good on there, people are like, "Oh, that sounds too normal or too in depth. I want to hear the crazy reptilian." Right. You know, I, I know exactly. I, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Yeah, people yeah. want the more fanatical, the more insane, and I get that. I mean, coming from someone who enjoyed, I guess daytime talk shows you know like jerry springer all the really trashy shows like maury and yes, yeah. i love all that shit to be honest with you Donahue and, uh, yeah Sally, and Geraldo. i'm with it you know i'm not gonna lie to you i'm all <laughs> for it i'm here to watch it i'm here for it to go down so i kind of understand that sort of itch that you kind of want to watch you kind of want to watch someone get into a car accident I was just going to say that. It's like a car accident. Everybody yeah, you, you want to see it. It's like when people are fighting, you you definitely want to see who's going to win, at least in my opinion. Yeah. So we're both, think... you know, we're both wired a certain way. And I think most people kind of are. We're both, more, we're, I guess you can say some of us are a little bit more primal than others. I would agree. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're not wearing a dress right now, by the way. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I, well, that's one of the reasons why you don't see me on camera. I'm actually wearing <laughs> A dress right now. Oh, now it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, uh, that was great. That was nice. Um, but yeah. I do understand that you were also in the OTO at one period of time. That's what I yeah. heard. Word on the street. Uh, tell me. A, yeah, exactly. Word on the street. But tell me about that, uh, my friend. What was that experience like for you? And what exactly made you even want to join something like that? That's not a problem. Uh, it's just me. Take a bit, if you don't mind. But uh um, what even got me into it? Uh, you know, growing up, you know, I was always kind of big into ghosts, UFOs, I guess, paranormal. Like, I believed in that stuff as a, as a child. And I think also because of, like, probably the people around me, even my family were open to that stuff. So I guess as a child, I always kind of believed that the weird stuff was possible. Wow. And growing up, uh, 
from people I met in school and just, you know, things you see on TV or in movies, listening to metal music, you're going to come across like your family like, was into this. You said, well, they were into paranormal. Like they, my family believed in ghosts. My, my father and my mother both thought that things might live somewhere beyond, beyond this planet. So they, you know, uh, they would, I guess, entertain the idea of aliens and UFOs. And my parents thought the house we were in might have possibly have been haunted. So that's like even another thing. So, you know, growing up, I guess, even though I, I grew up predominantly like Christian, both my parents still were open to like, I guess those things, which may not have been normal for a conservative family, uh, Christian family. Um, so like I, I, like I said, I grew up so, you know, kind of believing that, you know, I guess the weird, weird stuff is possible. So right, eventually yeah. I got into, you know, hearing about magic and witchcraft and I was like, oh, what's that? And um, I found that very interesting as well. And then eventually when I got older and I guess I started getting into, I hate to say conspiracies, but I guess once I got into like really digging into, I think originally what got me into it was like looking into UFO stuff. I hear you. I find that fascinating, by the way. I hate to interrupt you here, but I, I always find it absolutely fascinating. What exactly gets someone into this sort of uh this this subject it's kind of taboo for most people out there obviously yeah. and but what what exactly was it specifically that drew you in into it by the way it was there any like moment you can remember where you were seeing something uh, out there that made you think well shit, i want to do this or get into this and study this deeper um it was probably sorry about no that. worries um it was probably i mean i don't know if i could really remember something specific specific but eventually once i got into like digging into conspiracy theories i guess like coming across people like uh, jordan maxwell david Icke, wow. Michael Sarian back in the day i hear you um they were all very heavy on kind of secret societies and occultism and stuff like that so that really piqued my interest and like i got big into looking into that stuff and then i guess eventually years down the road i was just like you know, for me, I just felt like I'm chasing um, names, secret societies, uh, dates, countries. And like, I still don't know what magic is. You know, I don't know what this stuff is. I'm just chasing, I think, people who started this and that and wrote this book and that book. And I was like, you know, like, what actually is it? And uh, I thought about like maybe getting a few books and like starting to read up on it. And, like maybe like, I guess, practice uh, stuff. And uh I ended up getting in touch with somebody on Facebook, uh, this is a long time ago, that I went to school with. Um, we happened to be like friends on Facebook. I haven't spoken to the person in who knows how long, and I just happened to hit them up because they were into witchcraft when I was in school. It was one of the people that I knew that were into that stuff. And uh, they were still into it, and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of more interested in like ceremonial stuff or stuff that would be associated with – secret societies I, I already realized that in my opinion there was a difference from like a witch coven than like a ceremonial magician uh, okay so i was I more i was more i wanted something that was regimented this is how it's done um you know there are maybe areas for you to throw in your own stuff but there's going to be a certain i guess equation to it you know um so i had asked them could you like maybe send me some you know, ideas of literature or books or whatever and then eventually I started reading books on it and then started seeing discrepancies like from one person might even be quoting the same book. And, but then that's not correct when I went to that book. So I was like, oh, you know, like, I guess you can't even trust too many books out there. <laughs> so I was like, maybe, maybe I should actually start looking into as crazy as it sounds. I was like, maybe I should see if there's any places around near me. Mm -hmm. I I just go and check it out right. and see like what's really going on. You know, what are they up to there? And uh, I knew a few people that were Masons, and they had told me, don't even bother because you'll have to stay there forever to get into, like, ceremonial magic. Uh, people were like, maybe, you know, check out, like, the Golden Dawn or the OTO, and I had already knew of them. And uh, I wasn't a huge, believe it or not, I wasn't a huge Crowley fan, and I'm still really not. Um, I will say I do think he was an occult genius at one point, but I don't think, I'm sure he was a screwed up individual, you know, um, possibly. So I don't put him up on a pedestal. I just think he was good at magic and occultism. Um, so I really wasn't too into the OTO, actually. I was like, you know, maybe I'll see if there's a Golden Dawn. That one seemed a little bit more regimented, a little bit more like a magical school, not to sound like a Hogwarts. But, uh, you know, it was a little bit more structured. And uh, there was nothing near me except for an OTO lodge about 20, 25 minutes away, maybe with traffic. 
And I was like, well, I, I guess this is the only option I really got in the area to go check this stuff out. And uh, believe it or not, these places are not hard to find. If you start like, you know, just Googling probably OTO locations or Golden Dawn locations, you'll find a site that will give you the information and contacts. And all these, a lot of these temples and lodges, they all have Instagram, Facebook, social media. I mean, so they're not hard to find, believe it or not. Um, it's not your secret. Uh, right. I eventually found the, found the one that was near me and found that they were doing a Gnostic mass, I think a few weeks uh, ahead of time. And I asked them about showing, you know, could I come down and see it? Because it was open to the public. And they said, yeah, just hit us up like the day before the day of, uh, because it was like weeks ahead I was asking about. And, uh, you know, we'll give you, uh, you know, directions and we'll let you know, like, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the day came and I emailed them and let them know. And they sent me an email back with like uh, the address and pretty much like uh, different directions coming from different places. Pretty thorough, actually. And um, I got there. The one weird thing I have to say the first time, like this started to weird me out. I didn't even get there yet. But because of the way the lodge was set up, I understand it now. But, you know, the lodge is like actually at the time was in the basement, of like a, an apartment building. Oh, my. They, they had a gigantic basement that they rented out. Now, they have a key gate. So when you show up, obviously, you can't go in unless somebody comes out and opens the gate for you. So uh, they in the directions, it was like, you know, just hang out at the park across the street from the address. There's benches over there. There'll probably be other people hanging out. Just hang out there, and we'll come out and get you when the time comes. And I was like, all right, this already sounds weird. But when I got there, there was probably like 10 people hanging out in oh. the area. And they all looked like they just left like a goth club or something. <laughs> so I was like, that must be them. <laughs> yeah, that must be them. You saw them wearing vinyl. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm not the right place. <laughs> they all looked like guys from uh, Interview with the Vampires. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. They all had fangs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like i'm at the right place everyone looks like a model here <laughs> so so uh you know i went um went in and then i guess after that ended up somehow ended up staying for, for a few years they Five, trapped six, you yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Damn, they will, got you i will have to say even in you know even then even my first experience yeah there was even a point when I, in my mind, I was like, if this gets any weirder, I'm leaving. Damn. Like, you know, like, cause like I, when I went, I was like, all right, I could find the Gnostic mass on YouTube and I could watch it. So before I go, I already know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going to like freak me out or whatever, or, you know, I already know what to expect. And I watched it and I was like, all right, this kind of just looks like weird church. I was like, hey, you know, it's not that bad. It wasn't too crazy, but I guess because it was on YouTube, there was no nudity. Right, right. <laughs> so Thank when I was God. there in person. And the, and the boobs came out. I was like, oh, whoa. I'm thinking in my head, yo, is this like uh, eyes wide shut? Like, what's, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, you found a really, um, a, a very uh, strange place, I, I would say. Yeah. And this was day one. Yeah, that was going to say, and the crazy thing is that I- uh, Day one, you're already seeing tits. Wow. Yeah. Well, the next time I ended up going was for like a class. So, because they did have other things to offer besides the Gnostic Mass. So I was like, all right, at least there's other things I can possibly do here, meet other people and learn from. And I'd always have to do that, but, um, which I guess I probably desensitized myself to that anyway, because I started going to the Gnostic Mass more than other things. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So wow. even like my first day was like a surprise. I first like, day oh. already intense. Yeah. So when you got home, what, what, what were you even thinking at that point? You thought, well, I guess, uh, I'm, I'm in. Well, I was just like, all right. I was like, I'm definitely going to probably go back for like i can't remember what the class was but they had a class that interested me and the uh, i i guess really if anything um you know and, and not that you know listen people need to be different because if everybody was the same i think it'd be a very boring world and you really i don't think you'd get too far either spiritually you know uh growth but um yeah I, when i even went there just my opinion I was like, I don't know if it's because I grew up out in Long Island most of my life, and now I'm in Queens. At that point, I was in Queens. So, like, now I'm in the boroughs. It's a little different. I even felt like I didn't fit in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, too much even compared to, like, a lot of the people that I was around. So, it was a very weird thing, but I was very determined to, like, at least try to stick it out a few more times. And then um, I think eventually, like, you start talking to people and you start finding, like, more normal people. Yeah. Especially if you start going more, you might see other people showing up because, I mean – they could have a hundred members, but you may only see like 15 or 20 every time you go. It may not always be every one of them. You know what I'm saying? So you could see people that would be like, damn, I haven't seen that person in a month or I've never seen that person before. 
you know, and you've been going a while. Right. But eventually, I guess, you know, probably because of, uh, you know, whole camaraderie thing, you know, people start talking to you, people start paying you interest. Uh, you know, I started making a few friends there that I did think was um, much more, you know, intelligent when it came to magic or understood it more than me. So I figured, you know, at least these are people maybe I can bounce off of, of ask questions, learn from a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's how eventually – Eventually, I got into it. It was really, yeah. really, honestly, it was because of being much, much of a conspiracy theorist. I eventually was just very, uh, you know, I very much believed that this stuff was real, and I did think it might actually have an influence. And then that's how I uh, got into it. And that's how you were sucked in for a while there. And yeah. how long were you in there for? It was probably there like five or six years. Oh wow! Yeah, just going, even going by like the time that it took to do like initiations, I, I had to have been at least that long. Wow. So yeah, you were there for a while and yeah, I did a few initiations. So, I mean, that's, that doesn't, you know, some of them, there's like a nine month wait or a year or a year and a half in between. So, and these were like normal initiations, you would say, well, the initiations were a little bit weirder. Like what exactly? Um, I'm well, curious like, right, now. First, the first one in Minerval, that's like an honored guest. If you take the Minerva initiation, you're not like a full member yet, but it allows you to come to closed meetings which would normally be for members only. And, um, and sometimes like, like sometimes I'll have a Gnostic mass where it's members only. There's uh -huh. really, there's really no difference hmm. in what's going on. If it's like, uh, if it's like only people that are members, maybe they'll play music, you know, like maybe they'll put on, like I've seen some lodges, like they'll actually do the Gnostic mass to like Katy Perry songs. I don't know why, but like Katy those, Perry songs. Yeah. Yeah. It's some, it's those. There's some weird MK ultra stuff going on there. Maybe for real who knows um but you know i'm saying like for the most part or if like if they thought they were getting like too i guess into magic theory and practice sometimes they kind of make that for closed members you know but uh i did that the minerval was like a was pretty normal um from what i can remember uh i do think in my opinion the wildest thing about minerval is that if you understood occultism i think everything is actually shown to you in that degree, like all the secrets of secrets and a lot of stuff is actually shown to you and is in the setup. So I think that's pretty wild how like odds are somebody coming in is not even going to understand the symbolism uh, that they're even looking at. Probably but, not. Yeah. Yeah. But later down the road, you might scratch your head and be like, wow, like some of the most deepest things that they try to hide were actually put in front of your face. Um, that one was, you know, like I said, kind of normal. Kind of the normal. First, the first degree. Yeah. You do have to, if you want to complete it, you will have to get naked. Oh my God. So you have to be butt naked and, and be, uh, I guess, sort of looked at like a Harvey Weinstein victim. Yeah. They'll even, um, they'll even put a rope around your neck and walk you around. Wow. They'll eventually cut it to symbolize a whole bunch of things. But I mean, you know, like this situation, if you go back and like, you know, you, you could understand the symbolism of what was going on with the cord cutting you also act like you kind of uh went through birth again you go in a tub full of water and they close the top for like a minute or two i got abu gray vibes right now when you said they were like <laughs> dragging you around so like yeah, i mean i understand there is other things to it with the whole cord but like if yeah. you just think about if you were a bird flying <laughs> over the lodge and you were to look down and be right. able to look into it i'm gonna see me walking around naked with somebody else tying uh with like a noose, a noose around your neck yeah yeah i'm like i look like a dog they're oh, walking yeah. like a slave they're walking like, like a like an animal right yeah um so like that that i did find um a little weird yeah and you know what the thing is too is that there's um the secret rituals of the oto if you were to go and probably look that up it might take a little digging but if you find the pdf um it's not 100 percent correct and i don't think it has a lot of the words and the and the grips and the signs yeah. uh, for each initiation. But the first few, first, I think six or seven initiations are in there. So I'm going to be totally honest before I took my Norval and first I had already read the book and read, and read those initiations. Yeah. And I know other people that were taking them with me also did too. I mean, and that was like even another thing. It's like me and two other people, like we knew what was coming. So I think like we all were kind of like, yo, can we do this? Are we going to do try to go for this? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Someone at this uh, lodge that I know that went said it's only like one candle and you can't actually see the naked people. Only the people doing the initiations can see you, which is correct. And not that I'm downgrading it. I hear you. But, uh, 
eventually. So it's like you even have like you and your buddies are like psyching yourself up to even keep going further. So like eventually, you know, I guess maybe because I was able to like I knew I was going to be thrown anything crazy on the spot. The first initiations or you know, up until whenever I left, I actually read them in the book prior. So I knew what kind of what to expect. So I guess it wasn't a total shock, but like, you know, maybe if I didn't know, then it I didn't been, yeah. to take it. I don't, I don't know how I would have reacted on the first degree when they, they told me that. And I didn't know. I might have been like, oh, fuck you. Yeah, you probably not. You might have checked out at that point. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see how some people could possibly be misled into that. And then you get there and you're like, what on earth did I sign up for? I'm sure that yeah. probably does happen a time or two. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, it's like you're already in it for like a, a bit, probably yeah. at least 10 or 15 minutes before they ask you that. So it's like, it's even in the point where it's like, you know, I've already like fucking, I've already committed part of it. You know, does that even kind of sway you into being like, ah, screw it, I'll just do it. You know, right. have you witnessed any other sort of initiations or rituals that you would, um, well, that anyone else would consider a little odd? Um, no, I mean, uh, they do, uh, you know, when it comes down to, when it comes to the OTO, they, they do their Gnostic mass. Um, like I said, I explained that. I mean, that every time they do that, the priestess is going to take her, take her top off at some point and her tits will be out for a while. Um, they, do, they do that. And then like, they also do like the three days that Alistair Crowley wrote the books of the law, the book of the law. They'll, um, do rituals for that and like a few other things. Um, so like their initiations were probably like, to me, a little bit more in depth and a little bit weirder than like the other stuff, even though, like I'm saying, the Gnostic mass, you're going to get tits every time you go. So, I mean, I guess that is a constant, but, um, it was really, I think more of their initiations that were actually a little bit weirder than uh -huh. any of the rituals I went to. And like, even when it came down to the rituals there, and I'm, I'm not denying that there wasn't people there who were good with this stuff. It's just like a lot of them were, um, I wouldn't say they had like these cookie cutter, like this is just what's done. If somebody wanted to be willing to take on the responsibility, they w you have the members doing the rituals. They're writing them and then getting other members to do them with them. Right. So it's like always like some of them could be good. Some of them could be fucking flim flam. You know what I'm saying? So like I, I wouldn't say like I don't think you're going to get that crazy stuff from like the actual members there. You know, when, when it was time for them to actually write rituals and do them. And what made you decide to um, get out of there exactly? Well, one, one thing I did notice, um, and I, I remembered every time I went through an initiation, which is like, was one of the things that actually really started making me think like something's wrong. But I was just like, eh, eh. Um, in Minerva at the end, they do actually make a mention to only trust yourself. Then at the end of the first initiation, they're going to remind you again to only trust yourself. I was like, what's up with that? <laughs> then after the second initiation, they're going to reiterate not to trust your brothers or sisters or your siblings, which is your other members, because like in the in the second initiation, like they act like they push you in a tub, kind of playing a prank on uh -huh. you. So like now obviously now you're not supposed to trust them. I hear you. you know? And they're saying that and something else to the degree that not everything is as it seems. So that is three initiations in a row. You have told me that I'm probably being lied to and deceived. Right. I mean, how many more? I mean, I had one more. But like after that, after that, I was just like, you know, I think you're trying to tell me something. Um, after you take the second degree, you will be eligible to. Um, well, first off, after the second, after you do initiations, there will be classes for them probably about a month, month and a half. After the fact, they normally try to get one of the people who did your initiation to do a class on kind of like a little bit of the symbolism, what they think is supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, meanings to it. They're not going to go too deep, but they will bring up some stuff that might help. So they'll do that. And um, at the end of the second degree class, um, they also started going into other things like the other degrees and like what would be some of them prerequ prerequisites to even be able to do the degree. If you're in the OTO, anything after the fourth, you have to be asked. You can you can ask and get signatures for Minerval first, second, third, and fourth. You can ask when your time is due, when there's enough time in between the initiations, depending on which degree it is, you can ask, I, I want to do the next one. After the fourth, you have to be like basically shoulder tapped and asked, Do you want to do this degree? Do you want to so they're picking at that point, in my opinion, too. 
for what reason, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, they'll let you know what you have to, I guess, some prerequisites. And like one of them going up, I can't remember, sixth to seventh, he was mentioning something that I even think like the person that you're with is going to have to be a member. And then I know for a fact, I don't know if it's seventh or eighth, but I remember for a fact, because as soon as they said this, my head popped up and I was like looking around, like expecting people like reactions. Yeah. And like, I didn't see any. And they said, uh, you'll sign all your shit over to the OTO. Mm. I was like, well, now that's a cult. Right. Th that, that cult that's a cult. Yeah. That. So again, you know, me rationalizing him, well, I'm not going to go that far anyway. So I guess I could still hang out. So <laughs> I still hang out for a little bit. Um, eventually what really i mean so i had that i had um them telling me in the initiations not to trust any you know basically trust the place in my opinion um there was other things like that there has been women that i have seen I've, I've seen it on a few of them so i do tend to believe it's true but on the fifth degree i i do think um if it's that one some of the women will actually get like a cross kind of like carved a cut into their chest really so i do think that that's pretty dark it's a little extreme um so like i did think like obviously it does get a little screwy um going up um in my opinion looking at that and looking at other things that went on in the other degrees i also started to realize i think they're also seeing how far will you be willing to go to go yeah and i think eventually like either you're probably going to be like part of like whatever they're actually trying to do or you're just going to be a guinea pig to what they're doing right um and i didn't want to any, any part of that well that's good um, i'm glad you uh, got yeah. out of there man you they probably want someone to commit murder or some crazy shit like that eventually you never know yeah yeah uh you know that is one thing i i i do sometimes suspect that like sometimes i think these societies might actually have people like in them that might splint the roof and start their own shit and that's like sometimes some of the occult ritual killings that are done so, I mean, there is like, I do think there is kind of like a small little trace to other yeah. things, but um, I think you're right not to get off topic, but uh, eventually what, like, I, I already knew I was out the door. I was yeah. hardly going anymore. I was maybe going every few months. Um, and like when I was going, I was really just going to the Gnostic mass and there was like a few people I was kind of close to that were high enough up that were the priest or the priestess in the mass. And they got to ask who was going to do it with them. So sometimes just because people that I was cool with would ask me, hey, would you mind being in the mass with me and so and so? I'd go, oh, sure. You know, I'm cool with them. I've worked with them before. It's, it looks like I'm doing something. So even when I'm not there that much, I'm at least, you know, I'm doing my part. Right. As you go up, they expect you to start kind of doing shit, too. Um, I was like halfway out the door and COVID came and they and again, like I mean, you were even talking before, you know, I have right. no problem shitting on both sides right, I, right. I, I will say i i think because of how far like left i guess things were going at one point it did push me a little bit more to the right but i'm very much just really like down the middle but they they first off i thought it was weird they crumbled with the cdc so they they, they shut down mm, yeah and i was just like i don't understand like so jesus the church down the road jesus has got more bulls than horace <laughs> Like Horace is too scared of COVID. He can't right. come out. Jesus, his doors are open. You know, like what's, what's going on here? You know, why are we closed? He started doing zoom meetings. And I was like, Oh, you know what? That's easy. A lot of them are like readings or just like easy stuff. You jump on for a half hour. I don't even have to turn on the camera. I just, you know, listen, I, you know, I'm there. I didn't even have to say anything. I hear you know, that. it was a way of me, I guess, like still showing up. And, um, eventually, uh, yeah, though, I thought it was weird that they crumbled through COVID. Um, I had already left, but like they even started making it a mandate to how you had to be vaccinated for when they opened up. They weren't even taking people that were vaccinated. Oh, really? They were unvaccinated. Yeah. So, I mean, I was already, I think, partially, like almost kicked out at that point, but like they even got to that. But um, when the George Floyd thing happened, I, I got an email and it was from like the OTO email. Ooh. And it was um, about a Zoom meeting. If we wanted to talk about the situation with George Floyd, why? Well, see, this is the whole thing. I was right? gonna say, what does that have to do with the OTO? It doesn't uh, the OTO is very much, and I just use them as an example because right, I think it's right. a perfect example to use. But they're just as Alcoholics Anonymous. We got jack shit to say about anything outside of this organization. We're we're here for the big book and for alcoholics. 
I we, we're not here to talk about politics and religion. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like that's how they are actually. They're very much almost worded the same in the in the way of like we have nothing to say about shit. You know, besides our our you know thing. So I thought that was weird, and I was like. I'm going to be totally honest. I went because I wanted for shits and giggles. I was like, I, I got to hear what's going to be said on this. I was like, I, I can't believe they're doing a Zoom meeting. I wish you had recorded that. Oh, God. I know. I really, I really wish I would have. Oh, no. Me. Yeah. I wish you could have. That would have been um, fantastic. But, uh, really fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Eventually, uh, you know, eventually it starts off to talk about the whole George Floyd thing and racism. And then they wanted to go on. Is anybody in the room? You know, we'll go around the room. If people want, we could take turns. And maybe, you know, times we experienced racism. I was like, oh. Wow. So goes around. Eventually gets to one dude. He's black. And he was also a lawyer. Oh, shit. And, and uh, he starts going on. He tells his, like, little story. And then just starts ranting and raving about how if we allow the government to deem Antifa as domestic terrorists, all our rights are going out the window. We're going to be screwed. The country is screwed. And I was like, yo, what's, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, they start talking about BLM. And I was like, yo, <laughs> is this the OTO? Like, what's going on here? And then they started asking if people wanted to start organizing protests. And I was like, Oof. and now the thing that I had left out that I wanted to mention before, and, yeah. I, and that this will get to something that I do think is up with this, at least the lodge I went to. When you also take the second degree, you'll be eligible to sit. Uh, I thought it was only going to be monthly. So I was kind of interested in doing it because I was like, oh, I'll do this once a month. I'm good to go. I did my part. They won't ask me to do shit. And it looks good. You'll get to like talk to like one of the main, main head guys, the, the outer head of the order, uh, Sabazius, and basically chit chat and bullshit for a little bit. How's it going? How's the lodge doing this and that? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, I guess I can do this. I was like, I don't get the point of it. I think it's kind of fucking silly. Like, I mean, what do you got to ask about? Then I found out it was every week. And I was like, no, not, I'm not sitting an hour aside every Wednesday night, even though it's during COVID. And there's nothing to do anyway. You were out. Yeah. You never checked night. out at that point. Dude. You know, so I yeah. was just like, this is weird. And then I'm like starting to think about it. I'm like, what they were saying and what we were talking about. And then you have a guy who's high, high up who wants to talk to you and understand what's going on in your head, in that lodge, and the other people's heads. I was like, I think, in my opinion, I think the OTO is actually either running psyops or they're doing data analysis. Yeah, it sounds like a bit of a cult, amongst besides other that, things. Yeah, that, yes. Possibly a front for organized crime of sorts, in my opinion. But, uh, so after that point, that was uh, the last time I ever did anything. I mean, even got to the point to where there was like people I knew personally on Facebook that were from the OTO where it's like when all this shit started popping off with George Floyd and COVID and all these crimes and, you know, places burning down. I mean, you got dudes in there that were like putting communists or socialists like under their, under their photo. Yeah. People pro, you know, promoting Antifa. And I was like, yo, like, it's <laughs> a little too never, wild. I was never really too political up until then. Right. I couldn't even have told you what a socialist or a communist was really. I was like really so disconnected from politics up until that point. And then it's like, I was just like, yo, what the, f like, what's going on here? I was like, why is like politics and like, it just didn't seem to make any sense to me. And I was like, that's this the is power of the media, by the way. A few years ago, not everybody was so um, emerged with the news and political ideologies as we are in 2024. I mean, there was, there was like even people that I knew, like James Wasserman, he was a big name in the OTO. You know, he, he's dead now. He passed away. Well, like, I mean, plenty of videos. He, he started the lodge that I went to. You know, he started that lodge in New York. Right. That I, I mean, eventually it moved a bunch of times. But, I mean, Tahuti Lodge, he started that. I went there. Um, he eventually, uh, you know, he, he was big on gun rights. He was more of a libertarian. And, again, the OTO was primarily probably left, far left-leaning. So, you know, not everybody liked him, even though he was high up there and he knew his shit. Yeah, I see. Now, there were people in my lodge that would shit talk that guy mm. so bad. And then when he passed away, all of a sudden they had this nice shit to say about the guy. That sounds pretty typical, you know, like though. They're having a thing there and yeah. talking about it. And I'm just like, you motherfuckers are fake. There's a lot of people that are like that when someone dies. And that just totally turned me off. Yeah, I, I agree. But you, you see that with a lot of people out there. You know, they, they uh, once someone dies... 
this person starts going into a mania almost and trying to sort of like show how much they miss them and love them and, and this and yeah yeah it's it's really gross but yeah eventually that was um wow yeah that was my experience i left uh you got the hell out oh, of there yeah and you know um, yeah just to preface even like the whole idea with like you know even when i was going my idea of magic what it was beforehand and what it was after is totally different and even during the time i was there my ideas had always kind of changed and like i guess developed into something a little bit more deeper but like yeah even when i went to go into this it was always more of um which is probably why i was more drawn to what i thought like kabbalah and ceremonial magic and hermeticism was like i just wanted to kind of like get through the matrix without like having problems just having you know i wasn't trying to become like I didn't like want to become one of these politicians or wasn't trying to become famous or rich. I was just like, I want to be able to like kind of control my own life and surroundings. And then eventually, just in my opinion, if you were actually really working on magic and not like, I hate to start getting into white magic or black magic, but um, if you know positive magic, you're only going to be working on yourself. My opinion, as soon as you try to manipulate the world around you, you're getting into bad stuff it's black magic in my opinion to an extent you know so for me i mean even a lot of it at at times was really more of like getting myself kind of like better um a lot of uh shadow work a lot of people i hear you like a lot of like again almost sounds like aa again oh my doing a inventory of yourself (laughs) believe it or not uh Uh, You know, I started doing heavily, you know, into stuff like that and like really just working on like what makes my mind like, why do I get mad? Why do I get upset? What things rule me? What things trigger me? Like, there's a lot of stuff like that you could start getting into. And I I heavily got into that. And I guess that was even another reason why I wanted to leave the OTO is because I also realized that like the image it even gives off was the farthest thing from the direction I was going. Understood. You know, like it was, it's a very sexual type of vibe and yeah. like sex, that is like a, it's a fine line in my opinion, when, especially when it comes to magic and occultism, there's a fine line of like to where that's going to be either shackles or not. You know, you can easily, I think, fall into being a slave to sexuality and that's not what a magician is supposed to do. You're supposed to have less shackles. You know, I mean, you th- think of like a hermit living out in the woods, right. you know, that's that's what a real magician would really be like in a sense yeah and think about all the sex magic rituals out there and that's even another thing i like i think a lot of that is misunderstanding or even psyops in a sense where even people somewhere up top understands like this is just screwing the participants and the people that believe that this is right yeah i agree i agree 100 percent. so a lot of these things you saw in your in your head and in your mind and outside of yourself as well all these red flags i should say you kept uh seeing and that's ultimately uh one of the last ones there you explained to us what uh drove you away uh, a lot of these uh, restrictions well i should say not restrictions but i should say a lot of the, the left-leaning ideology uh, made its way into uh the oto's philosophy somehow and uh, yeah, that's a shame and i gotta be honest with you you know i'm not even surprised to hear that because uh, i know a lot of people that are quote unquote satanist and a lot of them have adopted more of a left-leaning stance throughout the years and i always thought well that's kind of crazy because a, a lot of the satanists i knew from way back yesteryear you know they were kind of always sort of anti-establishment and anti-government and now today's sort of uh, satanists somehow they get their marching orders from uh, the government yeah it's really really weird i don't know how that happened by the way um i'm perplexed by that by that uh the whole thing because there's a lot of them out there a lot of these satanists with multicolored colored hair and all this and they teach uh they teach in the classrooms yeah. there's a lot of satanists out there teaching your kids by the way um i don't have any kids by the way so i don't really have a place to stand but i must say that's that's a little crazy to have uh, all these satanists be teaching uh, your your children out there that's a little weird i know i mean again i i couldn't really tell you i knew anybody there that much i mean i was close to a few people but again like do you really ever know anybody um i wouldn't say there was anybody there that like was probably like crazy crazy but i will say um you had all sorts 
of different types of occupations that were members at that place. Lawyers, doctors, teachers, immigration, all sorts of shit. So, I mean, you have no idea the type of people that are into this stuff. If you saw them on the streets, probably going to work or during, you know, when they're, you know, looking like a normal person, you'd have no idea. Right. Of course. No idea. Yeah. Totally. I, I get that. No doubt. Lots of uh, normal people in working society. But again, uh, for the longest time, I just think it's a little, a little weird that all of a sudden these people, um, they get their marching orders from Big Brother. Yeah. When did that happen? I don't know. That never made sense to me. <laughs> it never made sense to me either. But uh, I guess times change and the people change their stance and then everyone has to do what um, someone else says. Uh, but, uh, oh, and then I guess maybe just to eventually like wrap up, like I eventually was going to, um, if you want to leave these places, at least from my experience with the OTO, I couldn't tell you about other organizations, but like if you stop going, you're actually still considered a member of those put you as inactive. So, uh, like, I actually was like, oh, well, I got yeah. moved off the list. So, you got to, like, uh, contact the outer head, and then they send you paperwork, and then you fill it out. Wow. So, it's a big fucking process. Yeah. But uh, in between that time on my podcast, before I even started showing my face, I was only doing audio. I had really no idea what I was doing. So, it was just audio. And uh, I had covered... I used that book and I had covered the first few initiations and I added in like whatever it was missing that I remembered. And I tried to basically as best as I could, I covered like first, second, uh, Minerval, first, second, and third. I covered them and uh, believe it or not, within a few weeks, uh, Spreaker, BitChute, Rumble, Apple, everything, they got a DMCA notification and they took my shit down saying that it was copyrighted material and I was not authorized to be using it. So I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I guess, you know, somebody heard me. Um, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, you know? And uh, so they took it down and then mm. eventually a few months later, I was just like, I'm, I'm not doing like, I was working with somebody on the occult rejects. I was very afraid to show who they were. Right. I was just, I was just like, I, I'm, I'm not doing this show and then telling, and you know, telling people to stop living in fear, but I can't turn my camera on. So I was like, I, I got to stop. So I started putting my camera on. I didn't give a shit. And uh, I started showing who I was. You know, I was like, I'm proud of what I'm doing. Why am I going to hide? Um, and then eventually, I guess it would only make sense, even though it was probably six or eight months later. You know, it, I guess like if they saw a channel that might have done that, maybe they might keep that in the back of their mind to go check it again every once in a while. Eventually, I guess somebody now there was a lawyer in my lodge that I know was actually the business lawyer for the OTO. And they have done it to, um, God, I can't remember, Leo Zagami, a crazy dude in himself. He was going to put out a book about the OTO. She slapped a DMCA on him because he was going to publish stuff in there that was copyrighted that he wasn't allowed to publish. Interesting. So I had it assumed by chance it may have been her that did it to me. Ah. But um, eventually, I guess they had checked my podcast and was like, oh, I know who that is. I see his face now. Wow. And I actually got an email sent to my personal email <laughs> from the lodge. Oh, the lodge. shit. So they found out. Yes. And wow. then telling me that I was going to be suspended. Damn. And that I was going to have to be reviewed by, like, you know, the upper people. Mm. And, you know, that was the last email I got from her. Um, it was funny about a, a few hours after that, one of my boys that was still in it, he was like, so what the fuck did you do, dude? He's like, I just got the email because like every secretary or any person in that lodge that had like a position, they had to be notified about wow, it. So they all knew. Yeah, yeah, Damn. Yeah. Yeah, so, That's um, wild. And then about two weeks later, I, yeah. I'm thinking I'm going to hear something back or I don't know. I was just like, whatever. I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, what's the worst you could do? Kick me out. Like I'm actually petitioning to leave. Yeah. So I really don't care. Two weeks later, I get a letter in the mail, and it's telling me that I have been removed and kicked out, and I'm no longer a member and not allowed to join again. And I was like, well, I, I, was well I guess you got out. But do you ever often wonder, though, if somebody ever might uh, come sniffing around for you or anything of that nature? Um, You know, I, I don't think so, you know, and for a few reasons. I, I never say anybody's specific name. I never tell them where the lodge is, even though you could go easily find it yourself. So it's not like I, they could say he's going to be sending like trollers here. Uh, certain people might get trolled. Um, and I, I honestly, I think for one, I was never 
witnessed anything actually illegal happen, or at least I didn't know I was witnessing anything illegal. I mean, for I'm sure there was probably money games going on. So maybe when I saw people hand money to come into the mm. come into classes, that might have been money laundering. I don't know. You know, who knows? But I don't know, and I was never seen. You never anything. seen anything illegal, in other words. Yeah. But, so it's like the only yeah. thing I'm really doing is like telling the initiations that I went through, and it's like you've already kicked me out. Like the only thing is like honestly, I mean, maybe you might have to worry about the DMCA, but I mean, I'm sure they're not chasing down every show I go on. But if I went on my own show and probably did like, oh, first initiation explained of the OTO, I'm sure I'm going to get it screwed at some point with the pie taken down. But I honestly don't think uh, no. Honestly, I don't think so. And like I, I hate to even sound cocky, but like honestly, from like the most of the dudes that I knew there, I would not be worried about any of them coming towards me. So it's just like. Yeah, so it's whatever, but. Uh... Yeah, Very no, interesting, no, but I'm though. just saying, like, I'm not, feel, like, I'm not fearful of the yeah, people you're not that fearful. Me yeah. you know? <laughs> At least the ones that I know. Right. You know? Um, now, I understand. And, but so, yeah, obviously you didn't see anything illegal, but you're, you're not saying that um, maybe something illegal may or may not have been going on in that place. You did, yeah. you did mention some sort of a basement of sorts. Yeah, well, no, it was a, a basement that they were, um, it was like a basement apartment that they were renting. In oh, the, they're renting, okay. Yeah, because yeah, like even... in the building, there was like a basement door or um, like the other apartments. They I had, like, I think it was just like, probably, it was probably cheaper because it was in the basement and bigger. So they, I wonder you know, they, if there were any tunnels there. <laughs> oh, you shit. never know. I didn't even think of that. Hey, you never know, though. I wonder if there was a few. You know, it was one thing I had uh, noticed and covered at one point. I think we covered over 100 of them. What's that? Uh, Masonic lodges with either funeral homes like next door or within like a five minute walk around the corner. Something's up with that. It has to be. But like, I, yeah. I wonder if there's like a funeral home next to the lodge. Too. There's something there. But I'm also going to have to mention this to uh, Leo Zagami, by the way, next time I talk to him about the OTO restricting him of uh, these things. You no, know, he has it on, if I remember correctly, I think he has it on his site that that, that happened. Again, I'm, not, I'm not trying to. Not trying to put anybody's name out there, but yeah. he actually was ballsy enough to throw the chick's name out there on his site saying this is the chick that threw a DMCA slap. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was pissed. <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to have to bring that up now. Yeah, definitely ask him. Hey, just tell him to hit me up. I've tried to get in touch with that guy. <laughs> he doesn't uh, respond to you, huh? Uh, I don't think he's ever really like read anything, to tell you the truth. I think it's only been on like social media. So like, I never oh, I even, see. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even like he read it and was like, fuck him. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, yeah, very I'll, I'll talk to very him good. soon. Yeah, uh, we, he comes on here. He's he's kind of a, one of our regulars here. Oh, nice. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely bring him on here, and uh, we'll see what happens. And I'll bring that up to him. That's that's pretty wild, though. And yeah, he's a very intelligent man. I think. I think he's rather smart uh, as well. But yeah, that is kind of ballsy to be doing that and being like, yeah, this is this is the person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember it was funny because like I didn't even like I, I knew who he was. I've listened to some of his stuff. Um, and then like somebody was like, oh, so and so. He's like, did you know that so and so was like a lawyer for the OTO? And I was like, no. And he was like, yo, look, at fucking usually he sent me Leo Zagami's uh, website. He was like, yo, look, so and so's name is right there. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> well. Well, at least we know that Leo wasn't making that up. He was uh, telling the no, truth. No, 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 no. You know what? Even. Yeah. Even on. um. Me and uh, my co-host, Lisa, that I've been doing a lot of work with on the uh -huh. Occult Rejects, she lives in Texas. And believe it or not, there's a library that's 15 minutes away from her in Texas that um, it's kind of like Beinecke Library at Yale where you can go mm. and look at old books and you have to ask and they give you a time slot. Right, right. You know, I got to put it on the pillow and there's like a little soft thing to keep the book open. You can do that. And for some reason, they have a ton of Crowley stuff there. And... She was going and looking at his vision and the voice because a lot of it there is also like it's basically his notes on it and everything before it got published. So on these pieces of paper, you will see things that were not published in the book. It could be him doing gematria and math, him writing little notes and little diagrams. There's things in there that never made it to printing. So she was like, you know, I'm going to go back a few times and, you know, you can record stuff. And like the last time she was there when she was leaving, um, they happened to mention something to her. They were like, you know, I don't know if anybody told you, but like, you know, we know you're recording and videotaping all this. It's that's fine. But like, if you go to like use this on the internet, you actually have to get like permission because it's copyrighted. She was like, really? I'm thinking like it wasn't even published. Like it's these are a notebook. 
goes and finds out, um, yeah, can you just send me some information on who I got to talk to if I ever want to use it on my podcast or anything? They give her the information. It goes back to the same chick from my lodge. You have to hit her up. Oh, wow. Permission to use any of this stuff. Yeah, so your lodge is um, pretty notorious. Oh, yeah, there were no, yeah, it's one of the, one of the well known ones. It's like one of the main ones, then. Ooh. I'm sure there's, I'm sure, I'm sure it has significance. (laughs) I'm sure there's some shady shit that goes on there, my friend. It's probably a good reason why you're gone. Yeah. No, I'm happy. I just, even when I started having, like, it's just, my opinion, magic, if you're getting into it for the right reasons, it's going to be a personal experience. And, like, you, I just think it's a lot of it's unneeded. You know, I don't think you even need to, this is my opinion, you don't need to even cast these circles and have this altar and all that. You could just sit down and meditate and eventually you'll have a conversation with God if you fucking listen hard enough. Right. And have you yourself experienced anything that would be considered paranormal, my friend? Um, I mean, some of my magical experiences, I mean, I guess you know, it was visuals with my eyes closed, but like really paranormal. Um, I've mentioned it on my show. I mean, I guess to make a long story short, you know, I was doing meditations and I, I was using like one candle and it was probably only like a few feet away from me. Yeah. And I had my eyes closed and like I, I would get into these deep meditations and I was like trying to focus on my chakras. And eventually I was just like focusing on my uh, third eye and I was like trying to put a lot of pressure on it. I was trying to feel it. And I started like noticing like flickering or I thought like there was flickering going on. And I was like thinking maybe something was coming in through the windows or whatever, or like something was going on. And I was like, oh, what the hell is that? Cause like I would see it even with my eyes closed, it looked like there was like something going on like in front of me. And it weirded me out, but like I, I kept on trying. I would go back into meditating. Really, I don't know what that was. And then like something just made me think like, it's the fucking candle. So then like I walked over to it and kept my eyes open and like started like forcing on my third eye and it started like flickering. And then eventually I was did it to it went out. And believe it or not, that actually scared the crap out of me. I literally actually was just like, all right, the night's over. Turned around, walked into the bedroom, lay down in bed with my wife and was just like, all right, you're just going to go to sleep and try to forget that. Because like at that point, like that actually told me like, for one, the way I, I thought the world was, is probably wrong. Like my idea of science physics is probably obviously wrong. And it, it was just like a hard thing for me to like, if I accepted that that was real, that shattered a lot of preconceived notions about reality. And that was kind of, for me, believe it or not, I think that was actually kind of hard to swallow. Wow. So it sounds like you've had a very... Like, uh... my outside, my, my physical reality changed. Yeah. I was like, going to say, this I, is a very... Very serious. Very, um, very interesting personal experience you've had there, I guess you could say. But yeah, that was probably like one of the more uh, paranormal ones. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I've seen all kinds of weird things in the sky and in empty mansions. I've seen things. That's a whole other story. But you know, oh, one, right. of the, one of the weirdest things that ever happened to me was, uh, I guess, according to the other person in the room, um, a white orb appeared uh, from my back and uh, the light engulfed the entire room and i wish i could say i made that up but that is something that did happen uh to me and i don't know exactly why or how but i did ask for uh something leading up to that moment so i got what i asked for and i fully and firmly believed and yeah that experience happened to me even as i closed my eyes in this uh, dark room uh i i saw bright uh, light like the world's strongest fluorescent light turned on uh, and you just saw this white penetrating light even through your eyelids. It was quite the experience, my friend. And uh, I still don't know what the hell that was. And some people think I could make it happen again if I, if I wanted to, which I found uh, quite interesting hearing people from uh, David Sarita down to Michael Aquino saying the same thing to me, which was kind of unusual to say the very least. Did you feel anything when that happened? Or like any... I just felt a warmth. It's wild. Yeah, I don't know what what that was, and I would have literally said that that is crazy. If I if someone heard that, and if I heard that story, I would think that person's insane. However, it was a shared experience, so that's what makes me think. Well, I'm not crazy. Yeah. Something literally happened to me, and uh, everyone else in the room, just uh, me and the other person. Oh, well, that was even another thing that freaked me out with the candle, because like my first thought was like maybe I'm losing it. <laughs> Exactly. That was the thing. I'm like, oh, I must be really losing my shit here. Yeah. But I wasn't the only one in the room and they, they experienced the same thing. And they got to see it from a different perspective because my uh, back was turned to them. 
So they saw this thing uh, manifest from behind me. Who sure. knows what it was? Um, some people think it was like a light being, or some say it was something darker. Who knows? Yeah, that's wow. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a it's something that happened to me that I think about almost every day. And this was oh. uh, back in like 2016 or 17, 2016 actually. I would have to say there's definitely experiences that I can't forget or like has changed my life. Yeah, that one changed my life for sure. Absolutely. Well, yeah. So I I don't know what that experience was like. Oh well, what how to explain that experience for uh, anyone out there to you know as as you listen to something like that you think okay that that person's out of their mind and i'm with you i i would have thought the same thing boys and girls but again i wasn't the only one in the room and that changes uh, everything but here's the thing i've learned that that experience has happened to other people though i'm not the only one yeah you know that was uh i guess one good thing too about like with podcasting is like there's been you know doing what i'm doing um, there's been a few people that I've come across, you know, I've, I've met, I've mentioned it plenty of times on my own show that for my, some of my magical experiences that I've had, there does seem to be almost like markers or experiences that seem to be constantly reoccurring or visuals that you'll see when you're meditating. And, uh, that I have come across some other people that have had the same experiences, like same visuals. So at least I was just like, okay, like, which has also made me come to believe that maybe like there is like some sort of actual like people just tapping into the same consciousness. That's why they have the same experience. I don't know or something like that, but at least made me like think like, okay, I'm not that crazy. If some people like have had very same descriptive experiences. Yeah. yeah that's how I feel where uh, now I don't feel as crazy as I once did after learning that there was other people out there that had gone through the same thing, but holy shit. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a wild one though for me. So that's why I don't exactly dismiss everyone's claims if they saw this or that. It's hard for me to write everyone off when I myself have had some weird experiences that I can't explain. Oh, somebody told me my stories? I'd probably be like, yeah, you're nuts. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's just the way it goes, though. And that's why we're, we're part of a small demographic out there, you know. And I even, uh, unfortunately, even like, I, I even think when it comes to like magic and occultism, sometimes I also think like you, you're not going to fully kind of even grasp symbolism or certain things of magic unless you have an experience it's almost like kind of like a double-edged sword it's like kind of screwed right you know like you really won't even probably fully understand like what you're getting into until it happens yeah so i'm thankful for what i experienced oh yeah for sure because i feel like not everyone is privy to that sort of thing not everyone's going to have that experience where you think oh my god there might be something else uh, to this uh, world to this uh, plane that we're in this quote-unquote prison planet as they say. Yeah, I believe in, like, you know, even with the experiences that I had, you know, with the OTO, why I left and, you know, going there, you know, I'm not disappointed that I ever joined. You know, I, I did learn something out of that. It helped me realize, like, who I am, who I don't want to be. Uh, maybe gave me a little bit more an idea of, like, what my will is and what it isn't. Yeah. You know? And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it did help me at least become the person I am now. I and, Nick, and, and, Nick, let me ask you this. Um, you you have no regrets that you say about this, obviously. Mm -hmm. And what do you identify as now? She's, you know, it's funny. I just call myself like a lot of times. I just call myself an occultist. An <laughs> occultist. I mean, that's even simpler. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I, and this is probably because you know I mentioned earlier yeah. my pre, you know, being exposed to Christianity and Catholicism. Um, you know, I still even do say that I think. Uh, you know, going by the Bible, if you were to actually like read it and learn it, or even if people just were just like, I'll just try to emulate, I guess, Jesus's story. I mean, I will still promote that. Um, but I'm not religious. You're you not know? religious. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, I think all basic religions probably at the core and inside their, their writings, it, there probably is something positive. It's just man fucks it up. But that's what I agree with you. Uh, I mean, I yeah, that's what I think. Really, I, I think religion's good, but it's when man tries to interpret it, that's when things get a little fishy. You know, the convenience of wanting somebody else to interpret it for you is a problem. <laughs> that's a big problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, for some people, it pays um, pays uh, their, their private jets. You're right. So it's maybe not not such a problem for everyone. Yeah, a lot of uh, folks out there, they make uh, those pastors that are killing the game out there. You have them all over yeah. the place that just with the multi-million dollar houses and all these nice jets. I agree. 
Yeah, you say, God damn, I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> just start, just like starting art. to, yeah, you, you need to start your own um, church now. It's the way to make a good living there. I, that's what I read. I don't remember right. Jesus ever saying that, though. Right? <laughs> so I don't exactly understand that. I've always been sort of a, not, well, I guess sort of anti, um, but that maybe that's too of a strong word. I guess I, I can just say I've always been sort of against organized religion. Yeah. Like if you're going to practice religion and, or just study it, it's just do it on your own time alone. And, but then other people are going to say, well, you need someone else there to help you and blah, blah, blah. But even in the Bible, it says uh, to have a sort of like a personal sort of thing with your God or whatever. Well, I think the book is deeply occulted. And Very, all, yes. All the answers are in there. You don't need somebody else. You just need to. The Bible is the most. Think outside the box. Yeah, the Bible is the most, I guess, occult sort of um, book you could ever find, really. I think so. I mean, that was even like another thing when it comes to like ritual magic and even like, I mean, the OTO, the Gnostic Mass is like based off of kind of like, you know, Russian, uh, Russian Orthodox uh, Catholicism. I mean, even, you know, Catholicism is very, very ritualistic and occult. What do you make of a John D? You know, I, I think he probably knew his shit. It's just that he was one. I do think he was probably a scam artist. And two, I do believe I, I do think a lot of um, especially correspondences or there's a lot of ciphers out there. We're referring to Enochian magic, I, I believe, yeah, for those yeah. that aren't following. I do think he might have been a little bit of a scam artist with that. Um, but I, I do believe that stuff is real. What I'm getting at is I, I do think he was actually like a, a very learned man. He was definitely a magician. He definitely probably crossed the abyss and was far beyond advanced than I probably ever would be. But I do question his writings. Like I do think they might be like ciphered or just off or just not plainly said what's going on. And I do think like some people who do not understand or in the know will not be grasping it right right and the whole angel story is very fascinating to me because you have these people even way back then debating whether or not these angels were giving them uh accurate information or, or who was deceiving them i mean this is a battle that's been going on forever and then you have these psychics that are they're uh they're meditating as well when they're going in these trances and they're communicating with uh, spirits and entities and all this all this crazy stuff and even they don't know if they're being fed truth or, or bullshit, really. Yeah. So it gets a little weird, right? I agree with that. It's like, yes. who the hell do you actually believe? You can't even believe the government. You can't even believe the spirits on the other side. They're all like deceiving you. And these are supposed to be uh, like angels or, you know, these very non-nefarious sort of entities out there. Yet they're trying to give you bullshit. So it's like, who can you trust now? Yeah. Well, even with magic, I think sometimes you might even kind of like almost get stuck like in your own mind and like even like mind screwing yourself. That's what sense. it seems like, yeah. Or you can even be tapping into just like an aspect of your mind that's just kind of like lying to you. Hard to explain, but. It's very hard to explain, but there's a crossover happening right now in terms of the whole UFO world and oh. demons and all this sort of stuff. So, you know, we see these sort of things. You hear all these things about the Pentagon. These top officials out there saying these entities that we are seeing are quote unquote demonic. Uh, Nick, I'm sure you have uh, something to say about that. Um, you know, I, I think when it comes to like UFOs and aliens and stuff, um, I don't think it's actually like the way, I don't think it's like a ship flying around with like gray aliens. And, um, that's just my opinion. I, I do think, you know, sometimes I I think like magic effects or screwing around with magic in a sense could maybe give people some visuals that they might think is UFOs. But my opinion, I actually do think it's a lot of a, actually occult talk or occultism. There's like magic or something behind, behind it. It's, it's, it's probably hard for me to explain right now, but I understand that without getting into it too much. Yeah. But I mean, like Crowley had lamb that looked like a gray. I was just about to mention lamb here. You know, he died in like what, like 47 and i think that was like the same year so, i mean something happened big with ufos it's just very weird is you know nasa i think I, I just all that stuff i do think is all very deeply occulted psyops in a sense it's very like, unusual yeah the whole story yeah. of lamb and you know he's performing this ritual and 
I guess, and uh, everyone that writes it down, that he opened the portal of sorts and out came Lamb. A small sort of a gray like uh, alien for those who uh, aren't following along. Now you're caught up here. But yeah, this entity came about that looked like small gray. And now a lot of people think these things are quote unquote demonic or they're aliens and all this sort of uh, wild theories. Yeah. Well, Whatever I mean, you I... want to call them. <laughs> no, but uh, from my opinion, with a lot of like certain uh, UFO stuff, I do think um, a lot of it might actually just be like cult stories. Um, like I yeah. put it this way, even like other magicians taking their personal magical experiences and turning it into a story to sell to people. That's I also it. very accurate as well. Sure. I mean, I even think like even certain things with the UFO, like, you know, something I've been kind of getting heavy into with my show and trying to point out more. I do think it's just my opinion. I do think there is a lot of occult symbolism and even a lot of stuff just even in occult work and writing. Well, check it out. Check it out. It's interesting you say that because if you could go back and look at uh, the work of uh, Greer, he also has these sort of uh, night watches and stuff. Mm. And a lot of the yeah. people that attend uh, those things, they're very much into the occult. A lot of them are very, very, um, they're like Church of Satan and all kinds of a weird, also, like third party, like smaller groups and covens out there that are very much into the left-hand path, and they all go to these re retreats with uh, Greer, by the way. You didn't hear it from me, and I'm not suicidal, by the way, but that's what I hear. I knew uh, a kid that uh, that I know that has a podcast. He does uh, like UFO and paranormal stuff, and he's in MUFON, and he was even telling me um, mm -hmm. how, which he thinks is weird, that like all of a sudden like they're almost like adopting a lot of like Greer's ideas or like kind of yeah. seem very interested in his stuff all of a sudden and he's just like he's not comfortable with it he doesn't like it you know basically that's how he's saying it seems shady you know because he he even thinks the guy's kind of like my opinion Greer is a magician who might actually be doing real shit and that's why you're seeing stuff in the sky but those people have no idea what they're actually probably part of yeah that's what i was being told by the way by someone that was on the inside uh who goes to those things by the way so yeah, I've heard this from uh, two different people that uh, belong there that don't even know that I know them. Um, that wasn't intentional, by the way, folks. I'm just a good journalist. But yes, that's what how, that's what occurred. <laughs> oh, but what I was going to say, even with um, eyeball uh, with the UFO stuff, I even think sometimes that even goes back to what I was saying. Um, I've been kind of heavily getting into on my own show to point out to people. I even think a lot of the occult symbolism and stuff that you're going to like read, especially in older stuff. It's actually showing you parts of the eye and the brain. Uh -huh. And I actually think the UFO stuff, I mean, the eyeball does kind of look like a UFO if you think about it. It kind sense. of does, yeah. Yeah, so I even do think, believe it or not, again, if you're going to get into occultism in the third eye, you're going to have to think, I mean, your eyes are involved. Occult eyes, your brain, that determines everything that you're going to see anyway in this reality. Right, and it's... Uh, so I do wonder if there's like something up with that. There is something very strange about it. I mean, you hear all these stories about people taking psychedelics and seeing uh, seeing these uh, reptilian-like figures in their trips. Yeah. There's something to that as well, I would say. Oh, I think so. I've never... It's got to be. I've uh, never done that stuff uh, for ritualistics. I mean, when I was younger, I took shrooms and acid, of course, and ecstasy, but... <laughs> You know, since but that's I not taking you to the next realm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's more normal. Since since I got into magic, I never used any of those things. But I'm I'm sure after me, like having certain experiences, meditating, and like even the after effects, I I could see how uh, maybe probably an intense trip could start getting kind of borderline. Almost like, there. Wow, yeah. experience. Yeah. Absolutely. So I do think that maybe like shortcuts, is in a sense. Yeah. Some people are very much against that. Some say uh, they wanted to do it naturally. You could achieve that. I think so. Uh, but wh whatever, though. I mean, just take a, whatever you want and, and get there. Take a shortcut. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. Uh, do what you want to do. At, at, as long as you're not shooting me with a gun, you're you're fine. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I, I think that way about a lot of things. It's like as long as you don't have a gun pointed at me, we're fine. Pretty good way to live. It is. <laughs> it really is. I'm telling you. I like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, you go by the moniker at times, NY Patriot. Yes. Why exactly NY Patriot? Were, were you living in New York at some time? Yeah. Well, I've, I've been living in New York my, my whole life. Your whole life. Okay. Um, 
the Patriot was more of like, you know, because at the time, even when I was starting to put out my stuff, I mean, I was probably hooked on Q for like two months. And then I was just like, you were hooked on Q, unfortunately, for like two months. How did that happen? Um, because when I had left the OTO and actually put like the TV kind of back on again and sort of like kind of like paying attention to the world around me instead of like just ceremonial magic and reading and studying just to me, I like, again, I, I think I even said this prior to you before we recorded, you know, the left, I think is very blatant sometimes with their shit. And I think the right, right is just a little bit more sneakier with it, or they're just, they, they do theirs differently. But like, I was very much like seeing the magic or the psyops from the left just seemed more blatant at that time. So Q kind of was interesting to me. And then once I just realized it was like a moving goalpost and like just some of the most outlandish like theories and ideas were spurring from it. I was like, yeah, this is, in my opinion, I ended up, me and my co-host ended up doing seven episodes on it. We actually think it's a psyop from a Masonic uh, in order, the order of Quetzalcoatl. I'm pretty sure Q announced a psyop in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I would believe uh, that not to be uh, some sort of organic sort of movement, but a lot of people have embraced the QAnon uh, sort of thing. Uh, but interesting enough, it has, uh, for better or for worse, shined the light on uh, some interesting facets, uh, some of the darker underbelly facets that uh, I guess are deeply embedded into this country. Yeah, you see, that's yeah, that's like the one thing. One that, of the positives. Yeah, I was going to say is that at least it did kind of like. Get people's attention for sure yeah for better for worse i mean uh, oh so then i think i mm -hmm. guess eventually because of that like uh, yeah i was a little bit more into like the patriot but like i i mm -hmm. when i even took that name to me it was just more of like again like freedom freedom of the mind oh ah, okay you know i wasn't like it wasn't so much political it was i took it more as like a you know, overall thing yeah you weren't going to rush any sort of government building of, no. of any nature no. okay no no and uh yeah but like i was even saying to you i'm even trying to like get rid of that because i'm really not again i really don't pick a side you're saying the uh, wrong image out there i see at the, well you at don't this, want to at this uh, yeah but even like at this point it's like yo i'll be totally honest with you it's like i don't even want to hear biden or trump's name anymore yeah we're like, kind I, of drowned with all that can you just give us two other names to talk about for the next four years yeah i mean every day uh, yeah Every day I hear something about uh, someone, and I, I, I've, I'm I'm pretty much done. I've always been sort of in the middle, but you know, I, I at times obviously go with with the 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 right at times because they're more uh, logical and make a lot more sense. Yeah. Just right now they do, but yeah, no, not for not for very long though. There's still some things about them that I can't really agree with fully. So I can never be a part of that. any group. I'm a little too extreme on some things, and you know they wouldn't like me too much there. And same with the left, you know, they wouldn't like me much either. I'm too conservative for them as well. Yeah, we're hated everywhere we go. What can I say? <laughs> yep. So, I mean, that's basically how I got the name. Oh, um, okay. Plus, the Patriot Missile, I just thought that was kind of like uh, explosive, you know, and I'm an Aries. So, I mean, there was a little bit of like thought in there too. Like, I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm like a Jack Parsons fan, but I was like, oh, he was known for shooting missiles off and he was in the OTO. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'll just go with it. <laughs> Jack Parsons, uh, another interesting character as well. There's a lot of these uh, interesting characters out there, a lot of them that help shape uh, this world. And, uh, you know, you said Abu Ghraib, or at least I did actually to yeah. you, and you knew, you knew exactly what I was referring to, those POW uh, photos. Uh, some say that's the work of Michael Aquino, by the way. Oh, those, really? those techniques, those torture techniques, oh. they came from him. Since, you know, he was the... the um, the guy who invented all that, all the psychological operations that went on, they say that's the guy who really, uh, you know, was the guy that presented all those things and made all those torture things. All those uh, techniques we have today are a result of his work, they say. There was another guy, um, I can't remember his name. It might be Donald Ewan. Uh, I can't remember his name. I covered him on like an MK Ultra series. And there was one Nazi doctor that we came across that, uh, like it's pretty much like wrote like some of the commonly used like basic techniques that is used for interrogation and torture. Yeah. It's pretty wild stuff. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty wild. Yeah. I'm a Nazi and everyone, we're using it. Everybody. 
Uh, yeah, well, I mean, America has a fascination with Nazis. You know, we, we've been helping them since uh, the early days. <laughs> yeah. Even today, we're still helping them. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we never, we, we never stopped uh, being friends with them. I don't, I don't know why, but we haven't stopped being friends with a lot of shady people in this country. But I was yeah. going to ask you, by the way, going back into sort of the occult, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the West Memphis Three, right? Yes. What is your uh, sort of final conclusion of that whole case in a nutshell? You know, actually, I'm a little confused on that case. Uh oh. Um, it's a funky one, that's for sure. I, I do believe that everybody was involved. I just don't know to what extent because I do think uh, I, I do think it's quite possible uh, Damien Eccles that was like I know people will probably wouldn't think that you'd actually go to jail but like on purpose but I, I just think it was all one big magical working in a sense oh shit I haven't heard anyone say that before I mean the guy came out and he basically came out of prison and went run into like a nice expensive apartment in Harlem that's true he had all these celebrity right. friends yeah I don't know, because uh, he does, I do think, I'm, and I'm not putting this guy up on a pedestal, but I do think he is actually, like, real. Like, he, he is a real magician. He knows his shit. Like, real deal, like, has, you know, experienced things. And uh, I'd have to question that whole scenario, then. I always thought they were guilty, to be honest. Oh, I mean, I'm sure they are. I think they are very much guilty. And I think uh, Echoes absolutely did his part no doubt yeah i just uh yeah i just yeah i just don't think the problem is i just don't think like everything is as, as it seems you know what i'm saying yeah not saying the crimes didn't happen and not that they didn't do it i just think there's a lot more with that whole thing than we'll ever yeah know. i think there's a lot of cases like that where we don't really have the full picture i mean even look at like paradise lost i mean they put that out and it was like so much like on their side it was like totally biased and angled towards like I don't know. Just, you know, there was money to be made, too. During that time, yeah. You know, with them, it's just, uh, who knows. It's a very complicated case uh, for those that want to look further into it. There's a lot of uh, things, a lot of documentaries about it, by the way. Yeah. And Damien Echoes, he's out there teaching uh, people to do magic and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, You know, these yeah. rituals. Oh, very and... very That's like the whole thing is, it's just like, even like the stuff that he puts out, it's just like, dude, like, I know you know more than that. Like, I don't know. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, like, a, I think a lot of magic yeah, is just very, um, people who really understand it, I think for some reason, they're just too afraid to come out and actually get like real deep into like magic. And I don't know, it's just people obviously are just trying to hide secrets or things. Yeah. For some reason. I don't know what it is. You know? What do you I mean? Don't know, like, organization, mm -hmm. you're associated with something, you're under someone's thumb, but you obviously, you know a lot more than what comes out of your mouth. And I have to question why. They hang out in basements. They hang out in basements and hang out in tunnels. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. The tunnels. Oh, yeah. That's funny. I mean, that's where it goes down. down. Any tunnels around there? A lot of tunnels, I hear. You could, uh, you could actually make that uh, into like some sort of like a term now. You could, uh, you know, we could throw that around if you want to like label someone kind of like a pedophile or you know, someone creepy. You could be like, yeah, he's, he's the kind of guy you see in a tunnel. <laughs> so, he's a tunnel guy and the guy you see at an OTO agnostic mass oh my <laughs> and you see him in a sex orgy the guy at the bus stop there oh yeah I, I understand for sure we definitely are kind of wrapping up here so one more name I want to throw out there for you what do you make of my friend and I use that term li lightly here he's well I, I mean he's a fan he's a friend of the show I don't know if, it's, if he's a like a personal friend but, oh, but he's he's like a buddy of mine I guess you could say what do, what do you make of like uh, EA Coetti you know what? I really don't know much about. I, I couldn't. I could not give you an opinion. To be well, totally honest with you. Yeah. He's he's kind of a, like a controversial figure out there. In I have. World. I see. That's. I. Whenever I've heard the name, I've yeah. heard that with it. So I guess I just never really got into any of it. He's put out books and he has like he his. Puts own out a lot of material out there though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just. I never. Well, I like him. I don't hate the guy. I mean, a lot of people do hate him. They have the strong feelings about the guy, especially those that practice uh, practice magic and are into the left hand path. They uh, they don't really like him too much. They're like he's like the Chris Angel of the occult world. Oh, wow. remember Chris Angel? Yeah, I <laughs> Angel. Yeah. yeah, I think he was from New York. Yeah, yeah, I think he's from New York. Yeah, probably from like New Jersey, probably mm. that area. 
Um, but my friend, um, this was a great talk. I, I could oh, easily oh, yeah. talk to you a little bit longer here. We're just uh, riffing here between us here. Having a good time. But um, yeah, my friend, uh, plug away before I cut you loose here. <laughs> Thank you. And I, re I really had a good talk. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate yeah, no, it. Yeah, no problem, my friend. Um, again, uh, the, the Occult Rejects. I do also have the NY Patriot Show that will be eventually turning over to the Occult Rejects as well. But the NY Patriot Show, the Occult Rejects, uh, that's on um, Rumble, BitChute, all major podcasts. Uh, and then I have the Occult Rejects and NY Patriot Show on YouTube under the Occult Rejects. And one other thing I didn't even think about, I do also every Tuesday at 1030, I go live Eastern Standard Time. I do do a Clown World Weekly on the Spiritual Gangster Show, so that's that's a little bit different. We kind of just spoof on news articles for the week. You know, it's a little bit lighthearted. I do do that as well. Totally forgot to mention that before. So that that's where you can find all my stuff. Very nice, very nice, my friend. Well, Nick, I'll talk to you again, my friend. Thank you very much. And there he goes, boys and girls. That was our guest, Nick from the Occult Rejects. Go check out their program, of course. For more information about this program. Go to michaeldeacon.com, and if you want bonus material, that's patreon.com forward slash michaeldeacon. And oh yeah, that is where gold falls from the sky. You won't regret it. Once again, boys and girls, always a honor and pleasure to do this program for you. And with that said, the world is a mysterious place, and life itself is a mystery. Until next time, mahalo.